One of the most common questions I get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did for our viewers on YouTube is create a free mentorship course that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they get started. But please take note that there is limited seating every single week. So please reserve your spot at myinvestingclub.co. Link is in the description. All right, enjoy the video guys. So today I wanna to go over, I've been doing a lot of like super meticulous, like super strategical, like moments that matter, trading styles. Gosh, I even I forget my last full size, super, super um, technical stuff. And I kind of wanted to do an, like a psychological one. I haven't done one of those in a while. So I want to go over a lot of the, you know, the kind of pitfalls that you guys probably fall into that we all fall into. Um, if you know, if we're not careful and some safeguards against them and kind of how we can work around ourselves as our own worst enemy kind of deal. And so we'll go over the market sentiment as we normally do. It, you guys probably know what's coming. Um, we'll go over the key traders of the week. I didn't get much trades. I had a couple of trades. I'll go over them. Um, and because I didn't have, I didn't really trade or really watch a lot. You, you know, I'll do the whole, like for this week, if you guys want to just throw out tickers, you want me to kind of go over and, you know, try to find some trades or see if there's a good trade on a chart without telling me your trade. So maybe like if I, you know, like if I can spot your trade on there, maybe it'll make you feel good about it. Or if I look at a chart and be like, dude, that looks like absolute nothingness. Uh, maybe, you know, watch yourself, you know, we can kind of play that kind of game. But, you know, I'll go over the key traders of the week. You can throw out some tickers um, when we're ready. I have a rant ready to go, uh, something that's been bugging me. And, um, and then we'll get into the, the psychological traps um, or pitfalls that I feel like um, we're most subject to and what we can do about them. And at any time in the webinar, just go ahead, ask questions, and I'll, you know, I'll try to make it more interactive and fun. And mods can answer questions too. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't have to just be me. Shorts definitely still have the control, right? This is still the first dead market of 2020 and probably the only one. Um, you know, shorts still have that control in the dead markets. Last week, momentum it was literally all-time lows of this year. Not all-time, but of 2020, all-time lows. And I, But this week, I believe we saw s small sparks. But of course, all of them got doused, right? Like all of the could-be runners got doused. Um with the exception of KCAC today, right? That's the kind of the sole exception, but that's kind of a, that's kind of different, right? I mean, we're talking about a $15 stock, 15 to 20. It's not exactly a small cap, um, like the typical small cap. And it's got like Microsoft Bill Gates news attached to it. So you almost don't want to count that as a small cap, but if you do count it as a small cap, then, you know, like that's the exception. But other than that, there are no exceptions. All of the, the small, like, Almost runners kind of got faded out, like JNC and Kodak and IGC today, right? All those are getting doused out. So we're starting to see these initial, albeit weak attempts. I think that's a bullish factor on the market. Uh, yeah, not today. This is the bull market, of the bear market of, of this week. <laughs> Large caps have really been on a major rally. I think that's ultimately good for smalls, right? Because historically, whenever markets at all-time highs, that's good for small caps. The only reason why I think it's diverging this time is because of, you know, it's COVID is having its opposite, COVID is having this weird, you know, opposite effect on large and smalls right now. And one thing I've noticed lately is this week, a lot more easy to borrow names. And that's really good, right? Because if we can get more easy to borrow names, shorts can, can participate more. And eventually one of, you know, eventually the law shorts will all get caught in one name and that can be the one, right? So the more easy to borrow names, that, that's a bullish factor in the market. Like if all the stocks are easy to borrow, then that's an environment set. It's a bullish environment set up for one stock to squeeze and then another one to follow and so and so on. When that huge red candle happens, what's the percentage of the retracement of the pop you're expecting? I normally like to see, a, it's normally, it's not even a percentage. I just want to see it pop to a nice level that failed, the technical level. Something like this, like I want to pop to seven. You know, something like this, I want to pop to nine. Right, like I want to pop to nine here. It's not necessarily like, yeah, like 920, this would be okay. There's a nice support break here. A pop to 920, VWAP 929, any, any, anything in here would be acceptable. You don't get any of that, right? Here, I want to pop to seven. Like, like initially, you don't get it until it forms a base. Like, and see, once it forms a base, it, it eventually goes back, but it holds this base for a long time. And I want to talk about VRA one more time. There was a VWAP reclaim trade where last year I would have taken this trade. 
maybe in six months ago, I would have taken, well, in, in, a, in a better market, I'll take this trade. But it, I'll move that. In a better market, I will take this trade, but I didn't take it now. And I, this is how I'm using the market sentiment to kind of avoid a loss here. Hey guys, my name is Tosh Bradley. I'm one of the head mentors and monitors at My Investing Club. If you have any questions about getting started in trading, getting started in MIC, MIC in general, text me at 213-458-5997. This is not a robot. It is me directly on the other end of my business line and uh, we'll get you in the club. We also have special promotions going on that I can get to you depending on your trading needs. Hit me up. Back to the video. Yeah, so this one was today. Uh, Bill Gates is the catalyst, and so that that was enough for me to that was enough for me to take the trade. Um, uh, I was initially long biased on it, um, and you know, so I, I, I you know I, I kind of waited. I, I waited for like something to hold, some kind of support to hold, and I wanted to buy it. I did. I got a nice sell. This was annoying, and th and so this is when it became really short. This is when it became really like supply crowded because like when this thing like tank seventeen. I was like, oh crap, I was trying to sell at 1720. That's okay. I'll just put an order at 17. I'll put an order at 1710. It'll pop back and I'll fill. And it totally was trying and 17 was holding like an asshole. And um, I just like, I eventually just had to, to get it off because it just, it wouldn't bounce. So that was annoying. It's just the last third, but I was trying to get it up there. Uh, and, and then like, and then when it tanked down like to here, like I was like, okay, well this is this is a really bad tank. Let me see if there's a pop to get short. And like just like I just went over with like VRA and Kodak, there's just no chance because it's just too supply, too supply heavy. It just can't pop, can't pop. Uh, and eventually, when everybody you know like chases it, that's when it pops, right? And so. I actually had a feeling this would happen. I, I got short on a nice pop up here. I mean, this is this kind of level. Uh, I got short on the size pop, and I knew this was gonna. This, I knew this was gonna stop me out too. The second I took the trade, I was like, "Okay, I got filled, so here it's gonna stop me out." So the key thing about this trade is that, like, like I said, every trade is a. Um, you have to lean on probability or risk to reward, right? And so in this case, I was leaning on probability, right? Like, and so. The key thing about this trade is when I had a line trade, um, I did start early uh, in like the, I, I had some in the, in the teens and some in the third and some in the, in the high twenties. And those were like my starters. Um, but I wanted to get the 850 line and that's where I put um, kind of like the, the bigger size. I put half of the bigger size right there on the way up at in, you know, in those high forties as it went up there. And then you notice I watched it go up to, 50, 55, 60, kind of let it do that. If, you know, is it just going to like break? Is it just going to like break 50 and I'm just going to be fucked here? But no, I, it kind of, I let it do that. It kind of flushed down and then it popped back up to 50, stalled again. And that's when I put the orders in. That's kind of like me being safe on the line because, and I was kind of cautious with this because it did kind of have this grindy low scary. But here's the thing. When it comes to, I'm always on the other side of VWAP reclaim trades, right? Like whenever I, I'm always on the other side, like I'm always buying this chart and in another market, I'm buying this chart. It's easy to borrow. It's got higher lows. Like I'm buying this chart. Um, like, you know, like in another market, I'm on the long side and I'll lose if it does this, but in a, in an exciting market, I'm going to be buying this chart. But in this market, I really didn't just, I flat out, I said at the start of the video, like I, I, I just don't believe it. Like the first thing I said, right? Like something like, what's there between healthy competition and comparing yourself? With? Honestly, dude, like a healthy competition, it, it's kind of hard to find a healthy competition in trading. Like trading is a very isolate game. Like the thing is, is like, you really have to, like, you have to, I don't know. You have to be in your own world. I don't like to even compete with my tab. Like I, I like trade, your tab is like your buddy. It's not even like, like healthy competition. Uh, I, I don't, I don't know if you can like, why, why don't you just like, the thing is, why don't you just healthy competition with yourself from yesterday? Right? Like the thing is like, if you can, if, if you and someone are literally like, sim like similar to the same trader, then sure. Maybe you can have a healthy competition, but normally you guys are different. Like, and so it's very hard. Not like the thing is like, if you're in a shorts week and your tab is short and you're long, like it's going to be hard. Like you're going to feel like you're losing all the time. And, like, like, like now, like you're feeling like you're losing all the time. 
so let's get into some psychological traps here. So there's just a, one of the psychological traps that, that you guys can do is create way too many fucking rules, right? And the reason why you're making so many freaking rules is because you're, you're, you're basically just so freaking afraid, right? And an example is like, it needs to pop to this precise level or, oh, SSR is on, can't take the trade, right? Like SSR shouldn't ever be something that takes you, that make, that like takes a trade off the table, right? Like it's still going to trade with price action. You just might have to be more cautious and stuff, but like, or like, oh, uh, it's sub 2 million. It, it, it's 1.99 million share flow and I don't trade these, right? I don't trade these. I only trade, you know, it needs to be above 2 million. That kind of stuff, right? Like, like. Too many rules, too many dumb rules, too many, um, too many avo- too many trade avoidances, right? I want to take this trade, but that volume, but the volume candle on, but the volume on that candle was too high or too low, not enough, like like by twenty thousand, right? Like that kind of stuff. Like oh, I like you know that kind of shit. And here's the one. Let me tell you, this is the one that that I struggle with the most, right? And I eventually had to go dark because of this. Um, and going dark just means you have to kind of just go into your hole. And I think traders event, I think every trader has to do that. Eventually traders have to go dark and just go into their own hole. And avoid, I mean, not even like from their tabs, like every now and then, like a trader needs to just isolate and just do them for like a week or two, just to kind of find their own head again. Sometimes when they just have too much of this crap, too much of this FOMO, too much of this P and L envy shit, like too much of this. Anyway, it just it's it gets a little hectic sometimes in your brain, and you just kind of have to just like go dark, right? Not all losses are avoidable; some are unavoidable. And yes, you can take it way too seriously and way too personally. And if you're taking trades too personally and trying to really perfect this shit, um, you're you're just you're building yourself. You're you're just digging yourself into the psychological hole where you're you're confining yourself, and 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 you need to break out of this. Like you have to be you know, you have to be free to, tr- to trade. Yeah. You know, trading is, you know, requires you to have a little bit of flexibility and rigid and rigidity, right. But you are just boxing yourself in because you're too afraid to, um, to take a loss, right. You're creating all these rules to take a loss to only make sure you take perfect trades and they just, they don't exist. That was over 9,000. Oh, that's the next, that's, that's the next, that's the next, when I get, when I get tired of eye poppy, which will not happen for a very long time, that'll be the next one. It's over 9,000. Yeah, it'll take me a long time to get over eye poppy. I still get I still get excited every time I, I, I fill. Right on, guys. Right on. I'm going to stop the recording now. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.